carrots used to be purple. Do you know that? Carrots, carrots used still, to be purple. Still purple. Carrots used to be purple, but they they selectively bred them to be orange, which yeah, are more, but you, more you, you can still have purple. Oh, carrots. of course you can. You can have still have purple anything, mate. <laughs> you can't have purple anything. Yeah, you can have purple, um, purple rain, purple rain, purple rain. Actually, I think that's probably the one thing you can't have unless you, you take know. an acid. You can have purple rain. Oh, you're the expert, mate. Okay. <laughs> no, not not that I I have. The only, I told you about the time when I took mushrooms. There, when I took mushrooms, and I was at my uh, ex girlfriend's flat, and I was like, "Oh God, this is just so intense. I don't know what's going on." And I thought eating Maltesers would be a good thing, so I started eating Maltesers. And honestly, there were so many Maltesers coming out of my mouth. I thought I was going to choke, so I started <laughs> choking on Maltesers. And I was like, "Oh God, this is so shit." So I went and took a shower, and the worst thing to do is when you when you take a sh- when you take are, a sh- what the worst thing to do is when you're <laughs> taking mushrooms is to take a shower. Why? Because it intensifies the whole experience because of the heat. Mm. Yeah. How do you know so much about this? I don't know. I just uh, that's that's what I was told. No. Oh. You know by the shaman who provided <laughs> you. Hello everyone, welcome to Private Parts Podcast. This is where we read the most intimate sort of details of our lives. Join me as always is Francis Ball. Hello Francis. And we have a very special guest today. Yeah, we do. Wait, we should probably set this up in like a good way because... Uh, set it up, lad. Wait, let's, let, let me introduce you by your Instagram bio. Um, because let's that's probably how you want to be uh, perceived, isn't it? Like that's Absolutely. The, that's the closest... At Pete Strauss. Yeah, for that's listening. okay. So, at Pete Strauss. <laughs> I love Strauss. that little plug you just did right there. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Pa- hey, tastemaker. At- Influencer, voice of a generation, top lad, Pete Strauss. Pete Strauss. Oh, it's a, uh, should I follow you back? I didn't realise I didn't follow you. So yeah, don't follow, follow, back, follow back for well, sure. I d- I d- now I followed you, so it's yes. I can't unfollow you. But do you know what? We should probably tell listeners. So, Pete, you are the person who is uh, behind everything, right? You're the producer. You're the person who makes this show tick, as well as lots of other people. The uh, hidden guiding hand, very much the puppet master. You're the one pulling sta- the string. You're the hidden yeah. guiding hand on our private parts. <laughs> But it's true, right? So when we when we first ever did this, you were the person who we we came to, and we were literally like, right, let's make this happen. And and you've been here since the beginning, just behind the camera or behind the microphone. I do you remember how it started. You bought your gap year diary, to me. Yeah, yeah. And I read through three books of your gap year diary and turned to you and said, we absolutely cannot put this yeah. out. <laughs> was, that was the inspiration at the beginning. The inspiration was this whole gap year diary to go and I, which I, I think I said before, I, we wrote this diary. Well, I did wrote this diary. It's the only thing I've ever committed to. You did it. It was, there was three books full. The funny part about it is you had a girlfriend. It's the only the thing you've ever committed to. <laughs> Apart from my current girlfriend yeah. and my oh, right. other girlfriend. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying that. <laughs> you had a girlfriend at the start of that gap year, didn't yeah. you? And then as you read through the diary, it's clear that the relationship starts to break down. <laughs> but you just, yeah, 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 you just yeah. see it. It's like, sorry you didn't get to talk today. And then a few days later, it's like, I think you're being a bit unfair. And yeah, then like yeah. a few months after that, it's like, fine, fuck it. It's like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> fuck it, I met this great Peruvian hooker. So <laughs> she treats me nicely. Uh, but, but Why did I suddenly become cockney? Oh, she treats me nicely. <laughs> because you were on your gap year, you do all sorts of strange things. You have your identity crisis. But, but what I wanted to say guys is actually you know that this is the number one hit podcast in the world now number no, one we're not in the world yeah no in the uk no no the the podcast it's just charts. the uk oh. yeah <laughs> i don't know where we are in the world we can find out what can no because out? why is casey neistat and all of those ones that, that's, that's his downloads in the uk oh god mm. oh, i thought oh. we were number one in the world no we're not number one in the <laughs> but world but we're number one in the uk we can just tell people we're number one in the world yeah guys we're guys one. guys can we edit that bit out and just say that we're the number one in the world because <laughs> but that is that yeah, is yeah, right. i pete i suppose from the beginning did you ever think that this podcast honestly when you when we first said about this podcast were you like okay fine let's just try and do this or were you kind of interested in it i love podcasts so i was kind of interested in pursuing it further but i didn't imagine it turning into this with cameras mm. and a tour i suppose what we've got to say is a big thank you to all of our audience because you are the guys who make it every single day happen without you guys and it's and it's those little conversations which you maybe take for granted with the person next to you on the uh, tube when they're asking you what you're laughing about and then you say oh well it's just private parts podcast by jamie lang and francis bull and 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 that's how it spreads that word of mouth marketing i've had people come up to me not knowing i'm a part of this podcast just recommend it to me individually oh really yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so cool. no you I have 
have to say I actually produced no guys. <laughs> I love how you say I have to say it's the first before they finished it you go I produce it <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I produce it as my <laughs> no, no, you, should let, you should let them hang a bit so, oh, so what is it like is it, is it, tell, me, tell me what you think should change about it do a bit of customer research yeah exactly I, yeah. you could be like a mystery shopper yeah <laughs> well, what do you mean mystery shopper mystery podcast consumer mystery po- do you not know what a mystery shopper is no what's a mystery shopper people pay you to go into like a pizza hut or something deliver certain things on the menu and then you like review it Jamie's so. like wait people are going to pay me to go to pizza hut <laughs> where do I sign <laughs> wait hang on no there so people go in there so maybe. like pizza hut if they want to find out how like the Portsmouth branch is doing they'll go like Pete we'll spend they'll give you 50 pounds to go down there buy the double pepperoni yeah let us know what the service is like you know actually you when, I was, when, I was, when i was when i was at school i i signed up to a mystery shopper thing to like to to, to try it out because i thought well, it would it be quite cool going in undercover um <laughs> Um, you just thought you were going to be a detective. But they, but they, like, oh, but they just kept cover. sending me these things and it was like for like random... It was one was for like Poundland to go and buy like some weird like like brush or something like that, and I was like, "This is so niche." And like, I just I just thought I'm not going to write a report on on this, so I, I just actually I got all these requests, and then eventually they stopped sending them to me because I never did them. It's never the fun stuff. So I was like a failed. So basically, I was a failed mystery shopper. <laughs> I I uh, I worked for a um, a catering company. Once. Yeah, I worked for a catering company. Me too, actually. Yeah. I, I, we're, not, we're not the same one. No, which one did you work for? Well, I'm, I worked for I, High, high I, Society and at your service. I worked for the Rue restaurant at the Henley Festival, and I went. I went there the first day, and I thought, God, I don't want to do this. And then didn't go for the rest of the week, and still got paid for the whole week. <laughs> <laughs> So I made like I made like eight hundred pounds and didn't even didn't even That's go. Amazing. Yeah, it was actually genius. Ah, oh, fraudulent is that what, the word? What? Fraudulent? It was a, no. It was basically a, fraud. It was a, it was a clerical error. Money. No, it was a clerical error because I didn't say that I'd gone. I just didn't turn up. Yeah, but just but Pete, being an honest man, would have handed back the money. I did actually hand back all the money, every penny. <laughs> did you? Of course no, you did. No. I did catering for two days and you had to do silver service. You know when you yeah, yeah. like a potato between like the fork and a spoon. Oh yeah, I was that's so awful at it that I walked <laughs> out halfway through my first day, and then I got paid for the full week as well. On my first, <laughs> on my first, I think it must be something <laughs> they do. They're like, well, look, if you don't come, we'll just pay you anyway. But no, I actually, I, I did serve Cilla, Cilla Black. I, I, I served her her plate, and uh, was she grateful? And yeah, she was grateful. Did you, did you say as you put down, you went? Big fan seller. And then did you walk <laughs> off or did you just leave it? I imagine you saying that. You would have delayed it. You would have put the thing down and then you would have been awkward behind her. And you would almost whispered in her ear, big fan seller. And then you No, no, yeah, I dropped the plate all over and then I just couldn't come back to work. So <laughs> it was good. It's, 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 it was a good experience. Well, that, I that had one day I, of catering. I was at High Society and still to this day I get emails from High Society asking if I want jobs. Like really? still to this day. I like, honestly. Turn up. Why? Look, you look, still got the same email. Look, look, it's, it's, why still get it? If I click in well, here. Jamie's actually got one of those emails. Whenever a celebrity emails, you can probably guess what your email address is. Nah. Some have quite obscure ones and try and code it, but yours is. Yeah. Well, he likes <laughs> like, like, like unsolicited uh, contact you from You gave uh, your number out from fans. Yeah. Yeah, I, g- I gave my number. So here, I keep getting it. Like, dear Jamie, here at High Society, we are busy preparing for an episode. Of busy. I mean, it's just constantly. You should actually go and do it and vlog it. Give him a call. You should sign up and go and do some catering. What, I should go. I, it was one of the worst experiences I've ever had. It's so boring. Yeah, the worst job I ever had was I. It was for Fat Face and. Petersfield and I had to put clothes into a box. And Is it because you wanted boxes. the free clothes from Fat Face? I Come on, hated admit fat it. Face. And then on the third day, <laughs> by the end of it, you hated it. Uh, well, on the third day, I turned up and there was just someone else standing at the station I was meant to be at, and I got sacked because I wasn't packing clothes away quick enough. And <laughs> I had like a real crisis because I can't thought I can't even pack clothes away properly. How <laughs> <laughs> can I pass this degree? What, yeah. was, what was your first job? Well, actually, speaking of that, we uh, don't know how don't know so fu- how funny this is. I, and I think I probably said this before, but I say again. So when I was dating D- my friend, D- who the girl that I was in love with, right? I spoke about her a lot. That's not her real name, just to. That is a, yeah. literally her name. We'll have to cut it out again. <laughs> we the always ma- cut the names. We out. always cut the names out. I'm so sorry. Yeah, we always cut the names out. Anyway, it's making work for you guys. Um, I said to her, we we're talking about things, and to impress her, I was just like, "Well, oh, I've." Uh, Got a, I uh, work for Abercrombie and Fitch, and she was like, well, "What do you mean work for them?" I, went, I model for them. 
<laughs> okay, I kid you not, okay? And then anyway, about a week or two later, towards the summer, I was walking down Kensington High Street and this person stopped me in the road and said, hi there, um, we work for Abercrombie & Fitch and we'd love for you to come work for us. And I went, this is like the stars are lightning. <laughs> I, I swear this is completely true. I was like, oh my God. So I got this card and I went back and I, and I went and saw and cut out the name again <laughs> yeah, I went and saw blah blah uh, in Oxford and uh, I was getting out my uh, my my wallet and I obviously had the Admiral Crummy Fitch thing there so I went and sort of fell out I went oh, ah, sorry it's embarrassing and I had to put it back in and it was someone else's name and he went well who's like Lucy whoever and I went oh just just my boss <laughs> so, anyway, anyway we then were the call to a uh, like an audition type thing so we had to go to like this party, Abercrombie Fitch opening, we went to the party and things like this. And I still didn't know what the hell was going on. I was like, well, am I like an Abercrombie and Fitch boy ain't now? Anyway, we started doing these kind of things. We were like, great. We went for this audition and I went with this guy who was in Marlborough College year above me. Anyway, we both went together and we had a fun time. Anyway, we left and the next day we got through what our responsibilities were and I was working at Abercrombie Fitch. I was like, well, this is exciting in, you know, in sort of Oxford Circus type area. And anyway, he got uh, front of house. He got in the front room, like, you know, greeting everyone. And I got stacking shelves in the back room. <laughs> <laughs> I got in the back room. And I, and, and honestly, one of the rules were I wasn't allowed on the shop floor. <laughs> really? <laughs> I had to go out and in the back entrance. That was one of the rules. I wasn't allowed on the shop floor. <laughs> I was always intimidated because that's the shops where they have like topless built men outside. Yeah, yeah. Women, right? that's, that was Jamie's dream. <laughs> was that to, what you were aiming for to be that guy outside? No, I was not like. aiming to be that guy. <laughs> I didn't, why would I want to be him? It just made me feel nervous. I couldn't go in because I, I was very clear how unattractive I am compared to no, those two people. No, this is what you just. This is when we just stroll in. What was your first job, Francis? I worked. Like? I worked in the kitchen of a pub called the Angel on the Bridge in Henley. I w like wash dishes Pot wash Yeah yeah, all sorts Yeah wash dishes Made prepared food Prepared plates Nice Delivered And then when I Turned 16 I actually Went out and Was like a waiter Oh so you got to go Yeah house. yeah yeah But so, what is it to be But you also You've done stand up comedy And things like that right I've done some stand up comedy Okay so what What type of things Really make you laugh And we know Obviously this podcast makes Obviously you. this podcast Award winning podcast this award, award worthy uh, podcast oh, have we, won, we haven't won an award yet Have we We can make one up And win it Well, yeah. we, well it's a matter of time Come on <laughs> Yeah that's so true So what makes you laugh What makes me laugh Um as in particular examples of people I don't know, just or what, shows? Yeah, what makes you what makes you laugh or things like yeah, what shows or comedy? What what people make you laugh? I like a lot of American comedy at the moment. There's a show that I adore called Nathan for You. Have you ever watched that? No. It is essentially like Ramsey's Kitchen Nightmares, but he's like a character where he claims he's like a business expert and offers advice, and it's unbelievable. What's it called? Really? Nathan what? Nathan for You. Is it very In the funny? first episode, he goes to a frozen yogurt shop. Yogurt? That's so American of you. Frozen, Who says frozen yogurt? Frozen yogurt. <laughs> frozen yogurt. <laughs> is that like bit, bit like the heat, heat hot yogurt, but the opposite? Exactly. <laughs> frozen <laughs> yogurt. <laughs> and, uh, yogurt. You've never said yogurt in your life. I don't know why I did that. Frozen yogurt. <laughs> yogurt. <laughs> Um, and he, uh, I say yogurt too. It's fine. Do you say yogurt? No, as well? you don't. Well, I'm half yogurt. American. So. No, you're not. You're, you can't just claim you're half American. I am half American. Yeah, but you live in England. You're also like half Mauritian. Yeah, I am half Mauritian. Yeah. And then half English as well. No, I'm not English at all. You're not. No, are you not? No, not there, English at all. There, there is some root of you which is English for sure. Look oh, at well, from, from on the American <laughs> side, yeah. yeah. From the American from, side. From the American side, yeah. yeah. He just quite. He, Francis just likes being like a mongrel. He just like quite. I like, don't. I don't <laughs> like. It. I can't help it. Yeah. I, I, I am. A, I am. I am the child of two immigrants to the UK. So. Francis is trying to claim that he's like he goes. Oh, I'm a. I'm a. You know son of an Im two immigrants you're trying to make it like sound like it was like you <laughs> were like I, coal workers or well, something. No, no, no. <laughs> my, my, my father Im immigrated to the UK when he was uh, nine from Mauritius well, by himself with, with his, with his, <laughs> yeah. with his oh the big city the lights no, here we go <laughs> with his seven brothers and sisters and my grandmother yeah nice so I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an immigrant, child of an immigrant. And they all lived in one room on top of <laughs> each other and ate all one bowl and they had to share water. And <laughs> no, no, it, was, it wasn't like that, but... Yeah, you've got a British passport. I've got a British passport. Well, I was born in Hammersmith, mate. Hammersmith. Hammersmith. I was born in the John Radcliffe in Oxford. Oh, really? I was born in the Kings Lynn, which is the hospital that Alan Partridge claims to be born in. 
Oh, really? In Victorian Kings. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, so oh, yes, Kings Lynn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, so, so you uh, so you like this? So what's called yes, Nathan? this program, Nathan for you. So he goes into a frozen yogurt shop and uh, he convinces them to come up with a poo flavored yogurt. And it's <laughs> honestly, it's is it real? Is it real? Yeah, it's real. He's in character, but no one else around him is in character. That's There's honestly. no way. It how makes does he, me howl with laughter. How does he do amazing. it? How does he do that? I've got. He is just absolutely incredible. Did you see that dumb Starbucks thing a while ago? He opened a chain of dumb Starbucks where it was all the same branding, but it just said dumb in front of it. And really? all the same recipe. How did he get away with that? Oh, he didn't. Okay, so also, do you know what I'm doing this? Um, do you know what I'm doing this Friday? Go on. Is it this Friday? When The Rolls Wedding is this Saturday. Saturday, of yeah. course. Uh, do you know what I'm doing this Saturday? Go on. Definitely um, not going to it. Have you been invited? Uh... No, I haven't. I, I, yeah, 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 no, I definitely haven't. I haven't. I'm, uh, I'm hosting my on my radio show. I'm hosting it for four hours. I'm actually just presenting the whole thing and live. Doing, doing it live. Oh yeah, my God. which is really. That's going to be really. I think think, think that's going to have massive, uh, massive listenership, right? I, I, I think a lot yeah. of a lot of people are going to instead of you know watching it on TV, they're going to be listening to. <laughs> Your radio show. Yeah, they probably will, man. They probably Well, they'll will. probably, you know, they, well, they'll, they'll probably do is they'll probably mute the BBC coverage and just play your radio show in the background. That's good yeah, idea. that's what they will do for that's sure. That's probably what they're going to do. As a nation, that's what we'll probably do. Why wouldn't they do that? This, well, is, this is the thing. Everyone keeps, everyone's getting married at the moment. Pete, are you in that stage where lots of your friends are getting married? Yeah, I'm going to. Are you getting married, Pete? Six, no. <laughs> I'm going to. Uh, Why did you just start? Why did you just start her over that? I'm conscious my girlfriend might listen to this. Oh, really? Are you planning it? Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, what's your girlfriend's name? Helen. Helen Coyston. Hey, Helen Croydon. Coyston. Uh, oh, hello, Helen Coyston. Yeah, uh, hey, Helen Coyston. Um, listen. Pete really loves you. Yeah, he really does. And do you know what? He's got he, something to say. Yeah, he's got something. <laughs> No, he true. doesn't. Yeah, no, he, he does. Doesn't. Listen, big surprise on Private Parts podcast. Pete, tell Helen what you told us earlier. You are going to. I can only imagine how angry she would be if I used this <laughs> podcast to propose to her. Hey, come on, it'd be really romantic. It would get hits. Yeah. Yeah. I did I did Joel Domit's uh, podcast yesterday. Uh, it's like and also firstly, I didn't realize it was I thought it was a podcast. So how I know podcasts is like they're sitting in a studio amongst yeah. very close friends and just having a lovely time. I turned up there it was at the Bill Murray Comedy Store and there was an audience. So I was like, "Oh my <laughs> fucking god." Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I was like, "Oh god." And I was off the back of a wedding having no steaks we did Sunday brunch. And I was always I get a bit sketchy sometimes when I'm hungover. So I was like, "Oh, this is not fun." I was like, "Jesus." Were you on form or uh, I, <laughs> I'm always on form that's definitely not true <laughs> yeah, it, is. it is and what have i not been on form name the day go on Three, uh, two, well, one, maybe when it. you said that uh reese james used anusol on sunday brunch <laughs> i messaged him about that immediately yeah yeah i know but it's on the podcast he messaged me afterwards yeah but yeah. it's yeah. not on sunday brunch well what now is it wrong is with saying it on sunday brunch I don't know. Is it a bad thing to say? I don't think he minded. Yeah. It's yeah. out there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, it we came we... out of nowhere, though. Like, yeah. almost it was so <laughs> random. <laughs> you just started talking about Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why Reese James' anus soul? Yeah. It's like, so what's the podcast about? Well, actually, mostly about Reese James and his anus soul. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what if they say about it on the podcast and I feel like it's all right to kind of talk yeah, about it? Yeah, but that yeah. Was, it's amazing how you just focused in on that one story from yeah. a, over yeah. a year's well, no, worth it's of it's stories. It's, <laughs> no, it's, that one. it's because I have an anal fissure at the moment. At the moment? <laughs> oh, that, oh, from a stew in the back. Oh, I do. At the moment, I have an anal fissure. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Why do you always get them? Because <laughs> What do you do? A lot, of in, a lot of impact on my butthole. I think that's what it is. It's a high impact zone. <laughs> the man in the beige suit. Yeah, yeah. The, high, the man in the beige suit with high impact on me. <laughs> tell, him to, tell him to be more gentle with you. <laughs> it's true. It's, 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 it's like, because also what I have is I go to the bathroom and I go, oh, God, I really need the loo. And I go, okay, fine. And I, and I start. <laughs> okay, fine. You talk, to your, you you talk to yourself it? through it. <laughs> You really talk yourself through it, don't you? And I go, oh god, here we go. And then as it starts to 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 come out, I go like, oh god, this is really gonna hurt because it's it sometimes just it, it's quite large. I don't know how I don't know how else to describe it. Anyway, obviously it um it then yeah it, it creates it creates an anal fissure. But wait, which what is, are you eating? That's bricks. Are you, are you, <laughs> I'm literally eating bricks. Yeah. Are you going to the toilet enough if it's coming out? Quite yeah, large? probably. Not. I I I I go to the bathroom after every meal. If I eat something, I have to go straight afterwards. And really? I suppose that's from if you're. A Perhaps you should get that checked out. Mm. If you're a cesarean, apparently now uh, recent studies have come out that you have a bad digestive system. Oh really? Right. Yeah. 
So there you go. There we are. You yeah. that. Do you not have a bad digestive system, Pete? No, I think I've got quite a good metabolism, actually. But you know, you can fix your you can fix your digestive system with probiotics. So you could you can take probiotics. Over I don't the need of time. to fix it. I, I'm quite happy with. It. I quite like the fact. And that also, I, do you know what might help you uh, is um, digestive enzymes. Yeah, digestive. It, it will stop you. Digestive is delicious. I love that. Do you eat those? And that helps your stomach. <laughs> no, 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 no. Those plug for the family business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I was um, so I'm selling my house at the moment, or trying to sell it. The great thing about the, my flat is that I bought it just before Brexit at the peak of uh, <laughs> the market, and now selling it at the bottom of the market. <laughs> That's the way. You're so it was really great investment oh the best yeah. i've had a lot of really good investments that's one of them yeah the other great investment i had was bevy the uh oh yeah how does how's that bevy. going bevy was uh the late night delivering is alcohol. it not it's not around anymore <laughs> The guy that started it up I haven't spoken to in about half a year. <laughs> changed his number. I can't get hold of him. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Changed his number. Oh, my God. So, yeah, yeah. That well, is it not, it's not around. Can I order anything on Bevy? Bevy? No, obviously not. Apparently, it's still trading. I, I've never seen a Bevy. Have you ever seen a Bevy driver? It's the anywhere? first I've heard of it. Yeah. Bevy. <laughs> my house, right. This I was... Uh, I was getting people to come around and have a look. So I, I yeah. got an estate agent to do the whole thing and he's going to bring people around. And I was taking a shower and I like heard noises in the other room. And I was like, what the hell is that noise? Like, it must be just outside. <laughs> anyway, I came out <laughs> of my bathroom and I had my towel wrapped around. I was sort of doing something and I heard talking in my bedroom. I was like, <gasps> I was like oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> so I was here. So I was like, oh my God. So I was like, like okay, oh God. So I had to poke my head out of the door and then go, Hello? <laughs> it was my estate agent. Uh, Why this, did they not tell you they were coming? Well, they, they obviously did. I just wasn't prepared. Mm. And my, the estate agent, <laughs> the, this, this older lady and her younger daughter, and they were just checking out the flat. I went, oh, hello, uh, don't <laughs> mind me. And I had to quickly get changed and get out of there. Because the most awkward thing in the world is when you're looking at a house to buy And you buy see the rent. person ha- taking a shower, yeah. Yeah, the, the most... No, <laughs> That's the most, one of the most awkward things. No, the most awkward, the most awkward thing is when you're looking to buy it's difficult to imagine yourself living there when there's someone else taking Mm. a shower there all the time (laughs) but it's true it's the most awkward thing when you're trying to rent or buy a place when you meet the people who already live there it's really awkward the best I had is when I was looking around to rent a flat a few years ago and we were with this young guy who was trying to be a bit of a lad and all that and we were oh you'll love this new place so we went up there first he couldn't unlock the door he's like what the (laughs) hell he's trying to unlock it finally open it boop and as he opened it went <laughs> and he went and the alarm went off and he went <gasps> and just shut the door went oh I don't know the alarm code I went <laughs> <laughs> just shut us <laughs> just shut us out and I went and he went oh we should probably do this another time and I went, we're just going to leave the alarm on he went oh, I'll stay here you guys go don't worry about it so we just left there's a stage at like the scene of a crime and forced to open the door and alarm went off you uh, coming out of the shower with two women and a state agent arriving so it's like the start of a terrible porn film mm. well, were, mm. and her daughter, that was, <laughs> her daughter. <laughs> yeah 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 well hello that's not <laughs> i was expecting you a little bit later i'm here on purpose <laughs> <laughs> and as you can see i'm standing to attention <laughs> and i just had a shower so don't worry about the smell <laughs> But I do have an anal fissure. <laughs> <laughs> and on that glorious note, Francis, let us have the question of the week. Okay. The question of the week. Okay. Francis Poole. Blah, blah, blah. That's what you sound like, mate. What? What? <laughs> That's what you sound right. like. Okay. Okay. Well, you've said okay about four times now. You'll say it again before you start doing this. Why did... Oh, no, that's, no, that's not... Okay. Yeah, I told you. There it is. I said there was going to be another one. Okay, right. how many... How many <laughs> There's gro- another one. How many grooves does a quarter have around the edge of it? Quarter? Okay, I, okay this, is where our, this is where our picture... Our, 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 what's it called? A, a picture memory. Photographic memory. Photographic memory. memory. <laughs> the, the picture. This is where my picture memory comes in. Photographic memory. Okay. How many grooves does a quarter... Have around. Okay, hold on. Shush, Francis. All I can hear is your voice in my head. I don't know why I'm trying to picture it because I can't count that much. Um, maybe you can. You can. Uh, maybe okay, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. Well, Go no, it's not four, is it? Quarter. It you doesn't can, mean you can four appro- sides. It means a little groove. You can approximate it, can't you? Okay, I've got. I've got it. Ready? 
Yeah, go on. But the sides don't count as the flat surface and the flat surface. How many how many angles on this side? I think how, it means you know like on a ten p, it's got those old little grooves on the side. We can yeah. try to count like yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, on a yeah, like that. On a what? On a quarter. Yeah. I just thought you meant like like the, the side. Yeah. How many grooves it's got yeah. on it? I'm yeah. gonna go with 120. 120. Shit. Okay, hang on. Let me work this out. Okay, 64. 64? Yeah. You think there's 64? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think there's 64, man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Well, well it, why do you we, always say that? Like, 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 you always do it in such like an un, like, <laughs> romantic way. Just, you just go, oh, look, you know, look, I'm your best friend. You forget this. So you should just be more. All right. I, I mean, there's actually, you can approximate it with mathematics and geometry, right? Okay. I did. And it's 64. Okay. <laughs> 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 Hello everyone, welcome back to Private Parts Part 2. We are still joined with Pete and Francis. Hi guys. Bonjour. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, that's a fantastic ah, but, yeah. That is a great idea. That is a great idea for, from Stuart Producer who just held up a sign and he has just said, uh, we should uh, get our listeners to send in some jingles. I'm so all for that. Mm. Don't, be, um, don't be wronged by shingles. <laughs> don't send in your shingles because that would be a bit weird um do you know i do want to just go back to the listeners just one more time because honestly you really are rock stars and the fact that we are number one in the podcast charts number one which is so exciting uh you constantly in the world you, in the <laughs> in world. The UK, you're constantly sending in socials you're constantly uh, writing about we've us, really viewing us I, I think we've really we're we're building a great podcast parts community I think so. Private passes. Pro- private podcast parts. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> and, and I podcasts. suppose we are really grateful for you doing that every single time. Honestly, and all the wonderful reviews you've given. You know, we've got yeah. five stars on uh, on iTunes and we've had 634 oh. reviews. We had oh. more, nearly 700 actually. Yeah, nearly 700, but we're still five stars. That means like on average... We're still at five. That's it's way five better than my Uber rating. My yeah. Uber rating is terrible for some reason. That's because you always you're always masturbating shouting at people. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. <laughs> but it's true. So I, I just that always, is true. No, it's <laughs> not true. I don't masturbate in the back of Uber. It's too but high. you have definitely done that. No, you told us you did that. I did it. I did it in the back of a car. Yeah. Once. Oh my god. Uber. When? How long ago? Not that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> the best the, was it an Uber? The, the best one. The best, the best one. I've told you this before. About, about, well, we're not going to be saying Spencer Matthews. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Spencer Matthews is the best. In the back of a black London cab, and it was in the middle of the day. And he said that he said the hardest thing was he was sitting in the back watching the um what's the the the, the <clears> rear view mirror watching the rear view mirror. So whenever so the taxi driver's eyes flicked up, and he was keeping a completely straight face, just watching it while hanging in the back. <laughs> So his face was completely mutual. So if they ever looked at the back, you just see a straightforward face. What what was turning him on about that situation? Just London life, man. Just London. <laughs> the hustle and bustle. The, the hustle and bustle. <laughs> the really... hustle and bustle and the free spirit of London. Or, or was it was it the driver's eyes? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a song we make. Yeah. The driver's eyes were looking at me. Yeah, the cab driver's eyes. <laughs> the cab driver's eyes. Uh, and and because you guys are very awesome and great, we're going to read out some socials because you, and it's episode sixty. <coughs> Two. 62, what is yeah. 62 in French, Francis? Uh, what? 62. 62, yeah. Is that right? I just guessed that. N- uh, no, that's 72. Is that 72? Okay, so we have one. Here we go. We've got Phoebe via email. Uh, this says, uh, Kelly. No, this is Kelly via email. Absolutely love the podcast. i got to say, it's one of my favourite parts of my week, and I always look forward to it. Keep me coming. Yeah. Check out that. That's what we're doing. It says keep me coming. Yeah. Keep me coming. So I have a little situation at work <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out if I have been friend zoned by my cow co- <laughs> co-worker, not a cow worker. My cow worker. <laughs> keep me coming, my cow worker. Who I'm crushing on. He's eight years older than me and we're the only two single people in the office. So we always vibe during the day and connect over things like music taste and other inside jokes. But I can't tell if he's into me in that way. We've been on a few. We've been out a few times with my coworkers, and he's usually fun and semi-flirty. But a couple of times he said things like, "I'm so happy you work with us now," etc., which make me think I'm a co-work, just a coworker, <laughs> and not a romantic interest for him. Thoughts, advice. Come on, Pete, give some advice. For Kelly, do you think? Firstly, do you think it's good to date someone in the same office as you? 
a no. It's Kelly. It's not. Wait, wait. Is it? Is it the same office? Because what if it's a co-working space? Well, if it's like a WeWork, then it's fantastic. Really? Well, I don't know if it's fantastic, but I Does assume it? it's fantastic. <laughs> 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 but I think why? Because you're not. You, 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 you're, it's not dipping your pen in the company ink. Because oh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. If it's someone you actually work for on a daily basis, surely it's a bad idea. Mm. I think I. I <clears> suppose <throat> that we ha- have. you ever gone out with a a, a member of your company? Not this company. No? No. No, well, then that's not your company. No. Well, well, what, the company before. Oh, company before right. Wait, after, after you. <laughs> private parts. Oh, when yeah. I got this company, no. When I first started Candy Kittens, we uh, obviously had Candy Kitten Girls. And you def- definitely <laughs> indulged <laughs> in Candy Kittens. That was the whole point of the, the company. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Yes. It wasn't the whole point of the company to just sleep with girls. That wasn't yeah. at all. You said you wanted to be, uh, uh, you wanted to be the uh, Hugh Hefner's answer to sweets. <laughs> <laughs> We uh, anyway we had these girls and uh, and I you did actually say that and I ended did up you? sleeping sleeping with one of the girls. The this kittens. Is ve- this is very. This is very beginning. I, I mean, this is like the first couple of weeks of starting. Just up. one of them. Just one of them. Yeah. yeah. Really? <laughs> yes. Just one of them. Just right. one. Just one. Right. Just one. Uh, and Kelly. Anyway, going back to Kelly. And then what? What happened? Um, well, she was from Ireland actually, and we just had to sort of. Uh, You've got a deported. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my god! Speaking of deported, oh what? my god! A friend of mine who I'm actually not going to say his name. Melody. No, not, not Melody. <laughs> lives lives in a country that I'm not going to say as well. I'm going out with a girl that I'm not going to say who. And anyway, they've been going out for a while, and uh, they're working in a different country, and they broke up. And he's one of these sour people, and he doesn't. You know, he really sour. So he phoned up. The, the government registration for like, what is it, for deportation and said that she wasn't working properly in the country, so got her deported. Oh my <laughs> God. Which country? I'm not going to say what? which Why one. Why not? Because there might be, uh, it's Australia. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah Is that narrowing it down for you? No, I don't no, know. I don't know. Do Tell I know them? them? Yeah, you do know them, but I'm not going to say who. <laughs> That's evil. Isn't that horrendous? And she got deported. She got deported, yeah. Oh yeah. my God. Well, he, was, he was Australian. Obviously. No, he's English. He's working out there. Right. They both were. <laughs> anyway, Kelly, what I think about this, I think first you should be very careful about working uh, and sleeping and flirting and, and canoodling and all those things with co-workers because it can get pretty sticky. Um, and but, secondly, you know, you'll never know until you try, so give it a go. Exactly. Secondly, go it, any guy, any guy that says, I'm so happy you work with us now, definitely means he fancies you a yeah, little bit. Absolutely. For sure, right? Mm. What, what, you, what, he might be talking about her skill set that she brings to the company. <laughs> That is very true. That is very true. He Why might is be, it all about be. sex to you? Well, I don't, I don't, I'm not you saying don't it is. You don't think about, you don't think about anything else. <laughs> I, I do think about a lot of things. I thought about a lot of things today rather than sex. What, come on, give me an example. <sighs> okay. I bet you I can relate it back to Walkie you. Walkie talkies. Ta- yeah, you are trying to communicate with Elle so you can say, come over. Via oh, walkie talkie? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, fine. Fair to have enough. Sex. Okay. I uh, <laughs> I was thinking about I was thinking about fleeces actually today. Yeah, because you'd like to lay it on the the floor in front of the fire and have sex on it. <laughs> <laughs> a single fleece. <laughs> right, right, why don't you read out another email? Okay. <clears throat> we have a private part uh from which one? The uh, from Stockholm, living in Copenhagen. Wow. One of my wow. favourite cities in the world, Stockholm actually. Stockholm or Copenhagen. Uh, Co- uh, Copenhagen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you know where Copenhagen is? Yes, in Russia. <laughs> it's not as in Denmark. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just checking. And I've been with my boyfriend for three years. I'm 21, so you do the math. She's been with him since she was 18. <laughs> <laughs> and I love him very much, sadly, but at the same time. <clears throat> oh, what? Oh. No, that's got a comma. It's not a full stop. You can't. Let me read it. No, uh, she's, she loves him very much, sadly, but at the same time. Uh, no, that's not, it's not a full stop it's a comma it's a- excitedly enough I'm going on an exchange to, re- to a really good university in Singapore the downside of this is that I will be away from my loving boyfriend for four months and will miss him very much but I've decided to go nonetheless because I want to be self-sufficient and challenge myself as well as benefit from this amazing opportunity <clears throat> good yeah good I like it I've been thinking about getting him something personal and symbolic for him to remember me by but I'm in Singapore, but since uh, when I'm in Singapore, <laughs> but <laughs> since he's not the type of guy to wear jewelry, I have no idea what to get him. And cufflinks are not for everyday use at uni, so I can't get him a pair of those. Do you have any advice? What would you like? He dresses sort of like Francis and likes the, all things classical. Oh, sounds like a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> what can I get him that's not cheesy, not too sentimental? 
yet personal and symbolic. Uh, lots of love from Denmark. Well, I have to say, you can get. Do you know what you can get? You can get Louise, your. You can get your. A nice leather-bound diary, which he you have to ask him to write in. Oh uh, God, how boring! And and every t- time he writes in it, he'll think of you because you got it for him. That's do you, a good do you know how one. you or a nice oh. wallet? Do you know how nice you get a, get get him to think of you? You can go and get your vagina molded <laughs> as, as a, like an individual sex toy, so you can always. That's very personal and symbolic. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 per, it's, it's, it's not that sentimental, but it's, it's yet incredibly pers- personal. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think that's what she's going for. But I think you know, uh, you know, maybe something like like a nice uh, wallet. Because every time he spends money, he'll think of you. Yeah, not that. That's, that's probably not. It's what hard mean. to think of something personal and symbolic for someone you've never met before yeah mm. but he, he's he's a, he's a bit like me so if he's anything he's like me then like he'll, he'll 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 w- just want you to um you know spend enough time with him before you before you leave i guess oh, oh my great god memories. Great what memories. the hell is great, going great memories on and experiences <laughs> okay we got one uh, from katie via twitter like hi francis jamie and everyone else in the room i have a question for you how do you keep your team motivated and create a healthy work culture also what is the worst job you ever had we kind of done this one done that, I, I, sorry katie we cancel that one um okay we got one from hannah via instagram francis always goes on about ghana but maybe it's obvious but what did he actually do there where did he go love the podcast very quickly francis so i uh have Just quickly have a business super out. quickly francis I, I, Real I quick. out there, so I'm involved in mineral development and mineral exploration, but also uh, con- conservation uh, of <laughs> of the of the pangolin, which and raising awareness for <laughs> the the plight of the endangered, critically endangered pangolin. So amazing. Okay, you, here we go. Pete, this one for you uh, from Guy via Instagram. Best funniest moment on a school trip. Best funniest moment. I've got a kind of horrifying moment on a school trip. Go, go on, for it. Hear that? Yeah. Um, when we we're in year four, someone sharpened a pencil and put it upright on a bus seat <gasps> and a boy called Tim Barker like jumped down onto the pencil. Why? Oh he my did, he didn't God. See the pencil, so he was just all excited and just jumped up and landed on it. Oh, yeah. did it go up his bum? I don't, I, they didn't tell us <laughs> but like yeah it was, I think he left school after that <laughs> that was would, he? does he have an anal fissure <laughs> <laughs> probably did he probably did what is the one that I did uh, we got we got detentions because we uh, on the boat from uh, London uh, from London from wherever we were going to Normandy uh, we bought condoms <laughs> and we got caught buying them and as we and as the teacher came into the loo I threw it to the side and he's like what is that and I went oh sir it's nothing and he went you've bought condoms haven't you <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Why? I don't know. What, did you, and you, well, didn't you say that you put it on and immediately? Yeah. First time ever. First time ever. First time ever orgasmed was putting on a condom. Just yeah. the act of putting it on. Just the act of putting it on. Yeah, yeah. He's, you, you got some weird thing with <laughs> latex, don't you? <laughs> you love it. <laughs> right. On that note, uh, what we're going to do is we uh, should have the answer to the question of the week. Do you know what? What? You should take a leaf out of uh, Pete's book. Pete, how many did you say? Because you are said... one groove off. <gasps> no. Oh my God. 119. You said 120? Yeah. But do you that know what? He, he, no, but that's quite clever because you think there's 360 degrees in a, in a circle. And if you divide that by four quarters... Shit, my maths was wrong. I knew that. I was just. Oh wait, actually, no, that's wrong. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be three, 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 a, th- a third. Yeah, it'd be yeah. a third. Yeah, so it. a third of it would be yeah, 120. I wish I'd gone through that thought process. I'm gonna blindly guess. I did. Not. Yeah, <laughs> mine was pure guessing. Um, do you know what we wanted to do? To, to our listeners, we know we like doing this. We love doing prank calls. Uh, well, so. you, j- you actually just guessed. Yeah, and you got. 100. Well, actually, I thought of something like a, a multiple of four. I thought 120. Was I sixty four? That's cool. It's not a multiple. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, it no, a quarter isn't actually. It, I know. It's just a. It's just a token which says twenty five cents, right? Yeah. So it's not actually. A, Everything about it is not in this is yeah. riveting. <laughs> um, anyway, so we like to do uh, prank but anyway, calls. Anyway, 119, you said 64, so that yeah. be, you were wrong. <laughs> don't care. Don't care. You don't care about anything. I do. I care about lots sex. of things. No, I don't care about sex. I care about. <laughs> don't care about. What, what, do you know what I care about? I care about Pete, and I care oh. about this podcast, and I care about everyone else in this room, via, apart from you. Via, apart from me. <laughs> via, apart <laughs> yeah. No, I was going to say vile, and then I. Um. <laughs> anyway, Pete, you are a guest on the podcast, even I though you produce it every single week. Uh, we, as you know, we love to do prank calls. We do. So I think what we want to do is do a prank call. And we've been speaking about selling my flat and the process of that. So we thought, from you, sh- you should call his estate agent, pretending to be an interested 
party potentially in buying his flat yep but then you've got to subtly or unsubtly um you know make it be known that you are a massive fan of jamie lang and that you really hope he was there in the shower i will yeah i think i'll start off quite subtle and yeah. then if yeah. i'm not getting anywhere yeah exactly going uh, for yeah, it. yeah 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 exactly yeah. Okay, and you've got to try and get her to agree. see how see how much she, this this estate agent is going to go for the commission. <laughs> it's like a and, schedule of yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just say, look, say I'm a very rich uh, individual, and but I would like Jamie to be, you know, or whatever. You, I'll let you do it. I'll, do it. I'll improv. Yeah, you improv. Pete, are you ready for this? I'm ready. Okay, ring, ring. Don't mention any like stories you've heard because otherwise they could clock on. All right, and I'd be embarrassed if they actually. We're going to call him, and it's Giles you have to ask for, or someone about... Giles. Okay, you get, uh, or someone else, anyone you want. Of course he's called Giles. How can I help you? Hello, this is Paul Stevens. Can I speak to Giles, please? Yep, let me pop you through now, baby, one moment. Thank you very much. Hi there, I do apologise. I'm struggling to get through at the moment. Would you like me to send Giles a message to give you a call? Well, actually, is there anyone I can speak to about the apartment available flat free? Please. Unfortunately, I've picked up your call in Central Admin just because the line's unavailable at the moment. There's no answer. Um, I can certainly send a message for whoever prefers to give you a call. I'm very keen to talk about right now, if that's possible. Unfortunately, there's nobody available. There's no answer on the line. I mean, I can ask someone to call, or if you want to call in a moment, you may reach someone. Is there anyone else at the offices who might be able to field this inquiry? I'm very interested by. I understand, Paul. I do apologize. I've tried, just tried the main line. I can certainly try I'm it again. I'm very, for you. very yeah, wealthy. Thank you very much. Hi there, I do apologise. I'm still not getting any answer on the line. That's why you've bounced through. Um, I can provide you with a direct dial to, to Charles' team if you like. And if you want to call in a moment, or I can send them an urgent message to call yourself. If you could give me a direct number for Giles, that would be amazing. Yeah, of course. Thank you very much. We'll give him a call now. What's your name, sorry? My name's Lucy. Lucy, you've been an incredible help today. No problem at all. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Bye. <laughs> Paul Stevens is a creepy <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> no, oh my God. Okay, here we go. We're going straight in. We're going yep, straight, straight in. Straight in. in. Here we go. Still I, I love it when it's more of like an adventure. <clears throat> mm. When it, it's not as easy as we hope. Here we go. It's We're easier getting through to Corbin, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> Always on call, Corbin, isn't he? His team, at least. It's to Babe Station. <laughs> Good afternoon. Giles speaking. Hello, Giles. This is Paul Stevens. How are you? Hi. Very good, thanks. How are you? I feel excellent. Um, I'm inquiring about flat free. Are you looking after that property? Um, we are, yes. How may I help? We are, great. Well, um, I'm a cash buyer. I'm looking for something in the area. I saw that and was interested. And I was wondering about the potential of setting up a viewing in the very near future, please. It should be fine. Um, the owner does live there, um, but he's fairly flexible um, with was, viewing sort of last minute. I was going to ask about the owner, actually. I understand that is Jamie Lang from Made in Chelsea. Um, did you say flat three or flat four? Flat three. Flat three. Um, I, I mean, we tend not to really to discuss um, clients' information, really. Um, you know, whether that's Jamie Lang or, or, or Joe Bloggs, but um, are, are you I, in the market I, I, looking at the moment? Well, I asked for a couple of reasons. One, if potentially when I was there to view, if he could be there, I'm a very big fan of his, I'd love to meet him. And two, I've heard some complaints about the odour from the flat, and I understand that's something to do with Jamie's lifestyle. <laughs> um, I, I genuinely, I know nothing about that kind of thing. I mean, I, you know... Um, I know nothing about, you know, any side of any any sort of owner there in in the building. And, and have you been? Did you did you notice any strange smells when you were there? Or uh, this is not the kind of call that I'd normally go into with, with anyone, really. Um, when do you, you've come through an anonymous number, 
Um, can you give me a line All right, sorry. mobile to give you a call back on? Um, okay, sure. You can call us at 0667. Nine seven two, yep. Nine seven two. Four seven five. Four seven five. Four seven five. Okay. Um, but would um, it be possible to arrange a viewing whilst Jamie is there? I've got a few things that I'd like for him to sign. Could be if he could do a few selfies with me. I think that could uh, grease the wheels of this transaction. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not even confirming he he lives there. I don't. I don't. I don't know who he is really. Who is he? Oh, he's very famous. He's on Made in Chelsea. You must oh, know right. him. He's I'm got a very good podcast. Know. Produced very no, nicely. No, I'm. Uh, I'm of an age where that's that's not of interest to me really. But um, how old what, are you, Giles? What What are you looking for? Um, I'm. I'm going to be honest with you, Giles. I'm a cash buyer, very wealthy man. that learned a lot of money in the chess game and i i'm a big fan of main chelsea i really want to meet jamie i'm a big fan if there are any of the cast members actually if they can maybe spencer maybe francis even binky yeah it's, it's not something i can help you with i'm afraid i understand giles i understand all right it's difficult getting to him i've, I've, okay. I've tweeted him i face messaged him I, he, he won't respond actually maybe you could just put in a good word for me paul stevens all right. Um, well, I just I don't I don't know who he is, but uh, and I um, I've moved to this office relatively recently, so I think he, that flat was taken on before I even arrived. So I don't I, I understand. Don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know the guy you're referring to, I'm afraid, but I I, I shall look him up. Jars, you've been an incredible help. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day. And you too. I love you. Okay. Bye. All the best. Bye bye. <laughs> 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 yes. I bye. Giles is unbelievable. He was great. Yeah, yeah he's he was. So good. <laughs> you can't get something more professional. Than I'm that. surprised he didn't hang up. <laughs> Obviously, nor I. There's an odor coming from the flat. <laughs> I don't know anything about an odor. Or... <laughs> yeah, now I'm concerned. Giles actually going to go there and be like Jamie. There's an odor. <laughs> wow. Wow. That was, wow. That was wow. Quite... Paul Stevens. That was quite there. a show there from Pete Strauss. Yeah. Founder Paul Stevens. Of... I got into character. You got into character. Yeah. You did. And what we haven't told everyone to listen is that your 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 brother is Andrew Strauss, ex England captain. That's exactly right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's definitely me. <laughs> really, I had no idea. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Did he just fall for that as well? <laughs> oh, it's not true. Yeah. Oh, oh, shucks. Got it wrong. Um, Pete, listen, uh, you're, I don't, I, I'm not really good. You're a legend. You're, yeah, and you're here every single Thanks. day doing this, what we love to do. So, hey, I suppose from oh, our side, sense. thank you so much. And to all of our team who pleasure. always surrounds us, who is sitting over there and standing over there. You guys do cat. Been great. Love you, to cat and stew. Yeah, yeah, you guys are freaking awesome. Um, you like seeing cat in stew <laughs> <laughs> every day. <laughs> stew like a cat stew, or or, or cat eating stew. Cat stew. Curry. No, but hey, we're, we're <laughs> oh talking. We're talking about a hot like a stew that you eat. Yeah, not you <laughs> stew. Yeah, yeah, a, an actual stew. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. what I said. Yeah. Cat. He <laughs> wants to see you eat stew. So at lunchtime, maybe we can organise that. <laughs> 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 um, no, listen, uh, thank you so much, man. We really this appreciate it. This is awkward. And thank you to our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> thank you to our listeners for constantly coming and viewing. Please subscribe, uh, comment. Leave uh, a review. Leave a review. And also, as always, Spread we're going... the word. We're going on tour. Send in yeah, send, send in, in jingles. jingles. We're going on Contact tour. Contact at privatepartspodcast.com. And also, we're going on tour at privatepartspodcast.com, which you can book tickets. They're selling like hot cakes as we always say uh, so please we want to see you in Corby or in Clapham or in Southport or in uh, Scunthorpe we're not going there are we uh, we're not going to Scunthorpe but anyway we're going sale. all over Sale Sale yeah. Bristol. Bristol. Bristol Bristol Nottingham I don't think we're doing Nottingham Glasgow Glasgow we're doing Glasgow we're not doing Glasgow <laughs> <laughs> if you want to find out where we're, where we're going then go check out the website it will be listed there you can just click on the, the place and buy the ticket it's uh, easy as that and always Pete what we like to do with our guests but you're not really a guest you're more just of a friend and oh, uh, not that our guests aren't friend friends the they're friends you're more of just our boss uh, <laughs> please leave our audience and our listeners with something inspirational I'm going to leave us with a Wayne Gretzky Quote. Oh, good. Yeah, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Oh, that's true. Love that. It's nice, isn't it? That is true. I love that. Another good one is uh, you don't remember the nights that you stayed in. Oh, that's nice. So anyway. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Let's wrap yeah. it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you, yeah, exactly. If you do go out on a night out, make sure you do wrap it up because that is key. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, we love you very much. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Peace. Bye-bye.